and welcome back here to Live Now from Fox. I'm Andrew Kraft. We want to get out to a press conference. Uh, we were not able to get to you live as it was happening. We're going to do this in replay. It was in Miami. Live Now, look there. Uh, over a pretty beautiful, sunny Miami view there. Uh, well, this is what we know. We're following this. We previewed this story uh, for you uh, the last hour. So, breaking news. A former career U.S. diplomat was sentenced today to 15 years in federal prison after admitting that he worked for decades as a secret agent for communist Cuba. Uh, it's a plea agreement that leaves many unanswered questions about a betrayal that stunned the U.S. Foreign Service. That's according to the Associated Press. Well, there you see him right there, Manuel Rocha. He's 73 years old. He will also pay a $500,000 fine and cooperate with authorities after pleading guilty to conspiring to act as an agent of a foreign government. In exchange, prosecutors dismissed more than a dozen other counts, including wire fraud and making false statements. Now, uh, this sentencing capped an exceptionally swift criminal case and averted a trial that would have shed new light on what exactly Rocha did to help Cuba, even as he worked for two decades for the U.S. State Department. This was not some low-level, low-ranking diplomat at the State Department. This was the former U.S. ambassador to Bolivia in the early 2000s, who for well over 35 years was in communication with Cuban intelligence officers. Federal authorities had been conducting a confidential damage assessment that could take years to complete. Uh, his sentence came less than six months after his shocking arrest at his Miami home on allegations he engaged in clandestine activity on Cuba's behalf since at least 1981, the very same year he joined the U.S. Foreign Service, uh, according to the Associated Press. So uh, we want to get out now to uh, officials with the U.S. Attorney's Office in Miami uh, who brought this case, uh, who held a press conference uh, on this agreement. Uh, Rocha there pleading guilty, averting trial. He'll get 15 years in prison, have to pay $500,000. Uh, let's watch with more details at this press conference from last hour. Apologized for the delay because I know there's a lot of you here who came here, who've been here since probably about 12 noon, and some of you probably didn't even have lunch. Um, and I just want to uh, sincerely apologize, and you remain here, and really appreciate that. Uh, my name is Mark Hensel Point. I'm the United States Attorney here for the Southern District of Florida. I want to give you a sense of uh, what's going to happen here, uh, who's going to speak, and what's the order uh, of who's going to speak. So, and I'm going to spell the name for you as well to make sure we have that. Uh, David Newman, he is the principal deputy attorney, uh, assistant attorney general, uh, Department of Justice with the National Security Division. And he will start uh, with his remarks. And uh, after that, this is uh, Jeff Veltri, V-E-L-T-R-I. He is the special agent in charge uh, FBI Miami, and his assistant is with him here. Carlos Gores is the assistant special agent in charge, FBI Miami. I also want to introduce you to the trial lawyers in this case. Uh, obviously, the people that are going to be speaking here uh, are sort of the principals, but this case is, it worked uh, many, many long hours by the trial lawyers and the agents. Uh, let me start with uh, Jonathan Stratton sitting here. <coughs> Um, he does not wear suits, so I'm very happy that he's looking as dapper as he is today. Uh, uh, Senior Counsel uh, uh, John Shipley uh, with us. And I also want to introduce you uh, from D.C. We have Heather Smith uh, with us right here. Uh, Heather Smith is a senior trial attorney with the National Security uh, Division. And Christine, where are you? Uh, Christine Bonomo is also a trial attorney. I'm going to go ahead and turn uh, the mic now to uh, David Newman. Uh, by the way, I'm so glad for all the work that you've done in this. Um, uh, we appreciate you being here. Good evening. I'm David Newman, a principal deputy assistant attorney general for national security at the Department of Justice. 
Uh, as you just heard, I'm joined today by the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of Florida, Markenzie LaPointe, who I would like to thank for hosting us for this event. Um, also with, with us, as you just heard, is Jeff Feltry, Special Agent in Charge of the FBI's Miami Field Office. This afternoon, Victor Manuel Rocha, former U.S. Ambassador and 20-year State Department employee, pleaded guilty to two counts of acting covertly as an agent of a foreign government and conspiring to defraud the government of the United States. Stepping back, this case is a reminder that we face espionage and insider risks from a range of countries and that we in the Justice Department have zero tolerance for espionage activity from anyone. We are, of course, laser focused on the threat from China and Russia, but we know that the espionage landscape is not limited to threats from those countries. Today's plea brings to an end more than four decades of betrayal and deceit by Mr. Rocha. For most of his life, Mr. Rocha lived a lie. While holding various senior positions in the U.S. government, he was secretly acting as the Cuban government's agent. That is a staggering betrayal of the American people. And what he admitted today is an acknowledgement that every oath he took to the United States was a lie. Mr. Rocha has now been held to account, and the terms of the plea ensure that he will serve a sentence that is commensurate with his crimes. As you heard in court today, Mr. Rocha's deceit began in the early 1970s when he first developed a relationship with Cuban intelligence officials while living <coughs> in Chile. Although he was born in Colombia, Mr. Rocha became a naturalized U.S. citizen within a few years of that first contact. And by 1981, he has successfully secured employment at the Department of State. Over the course of his career, Mr. Rocha rose through the diplomatic ranks, taking on multiple assignments relating to Latin America and postings in the region. And his roles included serving as the U.S. government's second highest officer at the U.S. interest section in Havana, as the director of Inter-American Affairs on the National Security Council, and later as the U.S. ambassador to Bolivia. Several of these positions gave him access to non-public information and the ability to affect, sometimes profoundly, U.S. foreign policy. Mr. Rocha continued to act as a Cuban government agent long after retiring from the State Department, including going on a secret mission to Havana in 2017. And he went to great lengths to hide his double life. He used foreign passports during overseas travel, and he falsely portrayed himself as a staunch opponent of the Cuban regime. But ultimately, his deception couldn't last. In 2022, an undercover FBI agent purporting to be a Cuban intelligence officer contacted Mr. Rocha, and Rocha agreed to a meeting in the first Miami Presbyterian Church, a historic Miami landmark less than a mile from where we are today. On his way to the meeting, Mr. Rocha employed surveillance detection methods to make sure he was not followed, exactly as he had been trained to do by his Cuban handlers in the past. In his conversations with the undercover agent, Mr. Rocha described how he had spent a lifetime serving a foreign power hostile to the United States and said that he was proud of his duplicity and his betrayal. He called the United States, quote, the enemy. He spoke of his contacts in Cuban intelligence services as, quote, comrades. And he described his time working as a spy as, quote, a grand slam, close quote, for the Cuban government. His own words, his own words leave no doubt about the true nature of his career and that he disregarded and egregiously violated the national security of the United States and the trust of the public that he had sworn to serve. Stepping back, as I said, this case is a reminder that we face espionage and insider threats from a range of adversaries. While we know that the greatest espionage threats often come from China and Russia, we also know that the espionage landscape is not limited to threats from those countries. And a core mission of the National Security Division, my division, is to vigorously prosecute those who break their oaths to protect this country by serving as willing agents of any government. And we work in close partnership with the U.S. Attorney's Office, the FBI, and other federal agencies to hold these individuals accountable for their actions. This case highlights the enduring counterintelligence threat posed by the government of Cuba and the Havana regime that has long focused its espionage activities on Washington, D.C., as well as on local communities here in Florida. As Mr. Roach's case shows, a top priority of the Cuban government continues to be 
infiltrating our government and undermining American security. And this threat is heightened by Cuba's close collaboration with other foreign adversaries on intelligence matters, including the government of the People's Republic of China and the Russian Federation. Our commitment to this mission at the Department of Justice is enduring, and we remain ever vigilant. With today's plea, the Department of Justice holds Mr. Rocha to account, and we will make clear to all those who violate their oath, you will never be safe from the Department of Justice. The task now falls to the U.S. government to try to measure the cost and impact of Mr. Rocha's years of deception. As you saw in the plea agreement, Mr. Rocha has promised to cooperate fully with the government and to provide truthful and complete information and testimony about his criminal conduct and about his deception. That will be a lengthy process, and it is now underway. And we are going to hold Mr. Rocha to the full extent of his obligations. At the same time, we have no illusions. Given the length of his co covert action, his access to sensitive information, it is likely the case that we will never know the full measure of the harm that he caused, the lives that he ruined, and the secrets that he disclosed. And we, we expect that he will spend the next 15 years in prison reflecting on those harms and reflecting on the consequences of his actions. I'd just like to thank U.S. Attorney Markenzie LaPointe, the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of Florida, as well as NSD's own counterintelligence and export control section for their steadfast efforts to prosecute this case and bring it to a strong resolution. I'd also like to recognize the dedicated, talented agents of the FBI's Miami field office whose extraordinary work made possible this prosecution. They received valuable contributions by the FBI's Washington field office, as well as by the Department of State's Diplomatic Security Service. With that, I'll turn it over to U.S. Attorney LaPointe for his remarks. Thank you, David. Once again, good afternoon. As amply stated by uh, David Newman, uh, Manuel Rocha, a 70-year-old Miami resident and former U.S. Department of State employee who served in the National Security Council and as a U.S. ambassador, pleaded guilty to secretly acting for decades as an agent of the government of the Republic of Cuba. Rocha admitted his guilt in open court here in Miami and immediately thereafter was sentenced by U.S. District Judge Beth Bloom to the statutory maximum of 15 years in prison for his crimes of conviction. Specifically, he pled guilty to count one and two of the indictment for conspiring to commit an offense against the United States and conspiring to defraud the United States and acting as an agent of a foreign government without notice as required by law. Rocha agreed to cooperate with the United States government with no promise of a future benefit for that cooperation which is unusual. In addition to the 15-year sentence that was imposed, Rocha was ordered to pay the maximum $500,000 fine. Rocha must also abide by the very serious restrictions and requirements, including the requirements that he give up all future benefits due from his State Department's career, turn over all profits he may earn from publicity about the case, cooperate fully with the United States, report any foreign contracts, contacts rather, and never disclose any non-public information without approval. Rocha's guilty plea brings accountability and a measure of closure to a chapter that threatened our nation's security. During the plea, he admitted beginning in 1973, I will not go through all the facts, as uh, some of it may be redundant, uh, beginning in 1973 until his arrest, he secretly supported the Republic of Cuba and its clandestine intelligence gathering. I tend to use secret, uh, fancy word for secret for me. Clandestine in the secret intelligence gathering mission against the United States by serving as a covert agent of Cuba's General Directorate of Intelligence. To further that role, he obtained employment with the United States Department of State in positions that provided him access to non-public information including classified information and the ability to affect U.S. foreign policy. 
His career also included a stint as deputy principal secretary at the U.S. interest section in Havana, Cuba itself. After his State Department employment ended, he engaged in other acts intended to support Cuba's intelligence services. He provided false and misleading information to the United States to maintain his secret mission, engage in clandestine activity, and travel outside the United States to meet with Cuban intelligence operatives. In a series of meetings during 2022 and 2023, with an undercover FBI agent posing as a covert Cuban Central Cuban General Directorate of Intelligence representative, he admitted to working for Cuba for decades. He celebrated his service as a Cuban intelligence agent working against the enemy here, the United States. He admitted during the plea today that he thought the story of his illegal activity for Cuba would never be told because he believed he had the intelligence knowledge and discipline to never be detected. However, he underestimated those same skills in the prosecutors and law enforcement agents who worked tirelessly to bring him to justice for betraying his oath to country. As this case shows, there will come a time when you will be punished for your crimes. Rocha callously disregarded the national security of the United States. His activities and deceit betrayed his oath of office and obstructed the lawful functions of the United States government. His punishment, 15 year federal sentence, virtually a life sentence for men of his age, sends a powerful message to those acting or who consider acting as an unlawful agent of a hostile foreign power in Miami or elsewhere in the United States. The truth, your truth will be uncovered. You should never think you are safe from detection the United States government will seek you out anywhere at any time and prosecute you to the fullest extent of the law. So the old saying, you can't run, but you can't hide. The Spanish version is, puedes correr, pero no puedes esconderte. In this particular case, he was caught and he was going to be caught. I am mindful that Rocha's decades long criminal activity on behalf of the Cuban government may be especially painful for me in South Florida. We in this community are especially aware of the dangers of the kind of undemocratic, authoritarian state that he supported by his criminal conduct. Just about every place you walk through in this community, you'll find someone who's from a place uh, who is dealing with that type of authoritarian government, that time of chaos. So it, it hurts for a lot of us here. To members of this community, whether you or your family came here from Cuba, or another country that does not support the values of our democracy. I personally assure you that my office will continue to zealously protect your rights as citizens and bring to justice anyone who unlawfully betrays the United States. I want to stress that his willingness to cooperate as required by his plea agreement is important, crucial indeed, but doesn't change the seriousness of his misconduct or his secret breach of the trust placed in him. As I, out my as I close out my remarks, I would like to thank again the assistant attorneys, the trial lawyers in this case, who are standing behind me. Uh, that is uh, the, the two uh, gentlemen and the two ladies standing behind me who worked tirelessly to prosecute this case and bring forth this impactful resolution. I want to thank the National Securities Division, Counterintelligence, Export Control Section trial attorneys uh, as well. Uh, I would also, uh, uh, I spent a great deal of time with the FBI, Cecil uh, uh, is in charge here and his team, they do a tremendous amount of work. And this case uh, symbolizes the amazing work that you folks and your folks do on a regular basis. Uh, of course, this didn't happen by itself. They had valuable contributions uh, from FBI Washington and of course the State Diplomatic Security Service uh, uh, who actually worked to get this done. Uh, I'm gonna... All right, this is Andrew Kraft back here. We wanted to show you uh, a majority of this press conference today in Miami, Florida. Uh, representatives from the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of Florida uh, announcing that former U.S. Ambassador Manuel Rocha, 73 years old, was sentenced to 15 years in prison for acting as a foreign agent for the communist nation 
of Cuba. Uh, and you heard there from the U.S. attorney that this is essentially a life sentence for Rocha. Now, according to the Associated Press, he incriminated himself in a series of secretly recorded conversations with an undercover agent posing as a Cuban intelligence operative. The agent initially reached out to Rocha on WhatsApp, calling himself Miguel and saying he had a message from, quote, your friends in Havana. He praised Castro as, quote, commandante in the conversations. He branded the United States the enemy and he boasted about his service for more than 40 years as a Cuban mole in the heart of U.S. foreign policy circles. Rocha was quoted in the complaint as saying, what we have done, it's enormous, more than a grand slam. Uh, Rocha getting 15 years in prison as part of this guilty plea agreement there by prosecutors in Miami.